Uh, good afternoon. You know, uh, I guess you know the first session here today is the first speaker is Dr. Foster, that cost cutting so inspiring, and uh, I'm the second, I guess, right? You know, trust the Canada, you know. Uh, although this is a session, it's not, you know, quarter a quarter session of cross cutting for Doug Foster's talk, but uh, that's truly very inspiring. So let me just uh, uh, cut it short that starting, you know, by citing this, you know, citation of uh, Charles Dickens from A Tale of Two Cities. Right? And that two cities are Paris and uh, London. Right? And uh, the background is the French Revolution and the first uh, Industrial Revolution. So this revolution is a cause tremendous of problem, right? Is the disappear, the window or spring, whatever, right? It's a to be or not to be problem, right? And today we actually right now is a little bit of a difference, you know, just uh, you're sitting here listening to my gossiping or just uh, walking along the beach to be exposed to the sun burn, right? Okay. So the problem over here is uh, Fast moving, uncertain world, uncertain world made by climate change today, pandemics, wars, and digital technologies moving very quick, complex of ideas and other disruption forces. Because of this disruption forces, we really need more resilient. That's the resilience coming from, and both from social and technology as well. Uh, where can I just? Oh, you're here, right? Okay. Yeah? yeah, yeah. Very briefly, I just joined the University of Georgia this August from Virginia Tech. And this is actually a pretty you know, good you know, uh, university. Why is this? Uh, it's kind of disruptive to me as well. <laughs> Disruption is a little bit in it, right? And uh, we actually, we are just uh, starting, we have been starting in this program only 10 years, right? But uh, I think it's a good university. It should have some good opportunities in there. We have openings for graduate students, G, uh, GIA, and uh, also you know new faculty members. If you are interested, please you know contact me. Right. And uh, outline this outline is have five areas, and it is each of them will be uh, hour, one hour, right? So I am going to cover that in fifteen minutes. Right. Okay. Fundamental concepts in here, right? So digital twin, you know, the, you look at this kind of many of this, you know, digital twin, you know, material design and resilience looks like a buzzword, an attraction of buzzwords, but a, essentially this is what I've been doing you know, for many, many years, or at least uh, 20 years and plus, right? I think uh, we're doing this, but without consciously, you know, understanding, yeah, this is uh, what we're doing, the digital twin, right? Or the resilience or the material design. So this one, the digital training is actually the digital representation and modeling and assimilation of the structural and the interactions of components of our physical systems, the physical training, right? And it's environmental and the time changes and the required detail and accuracy. So this is actually a modification, my you know, definition of 2004 is much uh, ahead of time, the digital training concept arise, uh, arise in there, right? It's, uh, Physical, you know, two important components. One is the geometrical or configurations, right? And another one is interaction. Right? That's the teaching could be multi scale from material structure to system, right? And they could be uh, linked together, right? So, good examples. So this is a very good example. So there are digital twins in a sense, right? You know, our models of the solar system. So, geometry, the distance, and the interaction, the Newton's law, right? And also like our atomic systems and our crustal structures, they are essentially the models or the digital representation components or counterparts of, of our physical systems. They are good examples. So we are very familiar with digital chain approach. Okay. And uh, the infrastructure, okay. There are so many you know, definitions of infrastructure and uh, we are confused. After so many years of study, this is the uh, definition that I, uh, come up with. So I think infrastructure is a human created physical entities and the socioeconomic systems that support the sustainable functionality of human beings and a human society. I think this is concise and then to the point. That's what I'm very proud of. I think, uh, of course, you're going to criticize on me. And when we talk about this, we have uh, various problems, you know, resilience, you know, safety, health, 
community and prevention, warning, evacuation, and so on and so forth, right? And um, even today, our colleagues could incorporate this called natural infrastructure, right? including the mountains and the sun surface as well. Right? Concept of resilience. Now, resilience actually you know, is a psychological quality, right? That allows some people, that's starting from this, you know, psychologist that they study is about the people, right? Ourselves. So I told my students, I said, anytime when you are not clear about resilience, talk about yourself. Think about yourself, right? You, how you can change it, how you can adapt to it. That's what you need to do for the resilience, right? So this is the one, the concept coming from yourself, right? Concept of resilience, actually, you know, the last one, there are many, many definitions. You'll search on them, many, many definitions. And the last one is by, you know, the US Department of Homeland Security. They have a good definition is with us, right? The ability to reduce the magnitude and the duration of disruptive events. So disruption, without a disruption, you don't need to have that resilience in there. The effectiveness of a resilient infrastructure, right, be measured in a sense, be measured how much you can recover, how you know, soon you can cover, recover it, how soon, how socioeconomically effectively uh, you recover the system, right? That's uh, the ones. So connotations of like resilience is related with, you know, the uh, prediction, right? Disruptions. You needed to anticipate or predict, preparing for the disruptions and responding to various, you know, disruptions. You know, in that kind. Human and the community center. We talk about a system. If we talk about one atom, there is no resilience. It cannot self-adapting, self-adjust, or self-managing it itself. Right. So that's uh, the concept. Whenever we talk about this, these are the uh, terminologies that we're going to use. And uh, we have to think about that uh, systematically. And uh, here is actually my definition, actually my assumption, right? Hypothesis, the ones of side hypothesis. Anything that you are doing, right? Meaningful things you are doing after three mapping, you would be mapping into doing something related with resilience, right? You know, if I have time, I can, you know, do some examples, you know, on site, right? And if I don't have time, just I want you to think of that. In, is equal or similar than three. Three mappings, whatever you're going to do is related with resilience, right? And uh, for a lot of us are materials scientists over here. So we are looking into like uh, the elastic part and the elastoplastic and the damage and an unfair, right? So we are looking into this area. And this area, there is a self-arrangement self there the material become hardening. So we are looking at our system that it has the hardening capability, okay? So that's a very good you know, design philosophy, hardening. And another one is related to the rate, right? So if it's uh, too fast, then you, you cannot absorb, the system cannot absorb. So is one is a self-arrangement system, another is rating, is the rate, right? One of the important, like uh, David talk about a uh, biomimicker and uh, I think this is also a very important structure is the bamboo structure, right? Bamboo structure, you see, this is a man hood. A lot of man hood, you have many, many bamboo shoots in there. If you cut this one, cut it here, the bamboo is still survival. The trees cannot, right? So that's a very good you know, system that we really can you know, mimic or can learn from them for design our infrastructure system. The next one, Phil, we will, Go very quickly about several examples. There are many, many examples, and I just use only one or two, right? The material design, uh, 2011, you know, by you know Obama, you know President Obama, and uh, the difference for here is the digital data and uh, the computational tools in addition to our traditional uh, experimental tools, right? Experimental method. So importantly, is using data and a computational approach to design. There are many, many programs about different countries in there. And uh, this is the one you know, that we got from the 2004. And that's the definition that uh, I just uh, presented to you, right? the digital representations and the so on and so forth. That is exactly the words that I used when I wrote this proposal. And it, the digital uh, training methodology was proposed in 2011, right? 2010, 2011. Behind us, so uh, we, our civil engineers, should be proud of that. <laughs> we also do something ahead of them, not necessarily just follow them, right? Okay, so 
that using the computational methodology, we did this one. It's also a National Science Foundation project using the DEM approach to come up with you know, the digital model or the digital team, the digital representation of the physical structure and uh, did uh, the modeling and assimilation for the compression test and then come up with you know, uh, the optimal aspect by the content estimation, right? And then later on, we evolved this kind of big data approach using the big data approach, using this you know, uh, machine learning approach, uh, use you know, the big data like uh, the OTPP data to come up with a, a very good uh, prediction or estimation of the aspect binder content, especially the effective aspect binder content. We come up with a very good results in there. And then using various data like uh, the distresses, you know, in the National Roughness Index and uh, uh, the rotting fatigue, and then we come up with a balanced mixed design. So this is using the data approach, right? The next example is also prediction of the disruption, right? This is the explosion and the firing in the tunnel. So we use this digital twin approach, you know, in a sense, digital modeling to model the pressure, right? The dynamic pressure or the explosion during the explosion and the firing process. How much you know pressure is going to be uh, is going to be filled by the tunnel, right? The tunnel in the system. The next one is sensing, right? The digital chain. Remember that you know physical chain and the digital chain. The digital chain serve as the brain of the physical chain, right? And they need to communicate with each other. That's a very important component. And that's the one that we use this self-powered system to come up with this IoT system, right? Self-powered sensor and transmission, you know, data transmission and data processing process for bridge monitoring. And this is the students, graduate students, and they are doing the data, vibration data in there. Okay. And the last one, do I have, still have time? Two minutes, very quick, I say something, right? Professor, resilient measurement and data-driven risk analysis, right? That's another project, you know, that we build uh, the framework approach. Remember, we always have this, you know, data collection, right? It's always like uh, the ones that here, like a, a data, database, developer of the database, visualization, and uh, uh, data and analytics and assimilation, and uh, the uh, interaction, and finally, is the decision making process, right? So that's the, uh, this you know platform approach, you know, put the resilience management, sustainability management into a complete platform, okay? And uh, using this you know uh, artificial neural network or the convolutional you know neural network to do the risk analysis, and also using this um, uh, the mixed reality, right? Mixed reality to, to come up with, you know, the realistic data and the modeling together to visualize so you can, you know, make a better decision of that. I still have a minute or two, right? <laughs> Quick. Okay. Thanks, and any questions? Yeah, we have time for a question or two for Mr. Wong. Any questions? So I have one question. Yeah, yeah thank you. Wong. This yeah. Uh, really nice presentation, uh, a lot of interesting work. I think I saw like in my undergraduate research uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, project yeah. there. So that was great. Yeah. Uh, did, uh, when, when you're building maybe a digital twin, you know, many people here want to build them for large uh, scale, you know, problems in cities, right? Yeah. How granular can we be? Usually it seems like right now a lot of focus is, for example, on pavement structure. Yeah. Not so much on materials and microstructure of materials. Yeah. How can we we build a digital twin uh, with the current limitations of computing that we have? Is it possible to build a digital twin considering the material microstructure and things yes. like that in a city? That's a very good uh, good question. A very good question. Right? Uh, yes, we can do. You know, we uh, typically we do this hierarchy, right? This hierarchy you know, instead of a parallel approach. You know, in the parallel approach you have to all this structure together. We we would do like a you know material structure, right? Material scale digital chain, structural scale digital chain, and system scale digital chain. Right? And once you uh, build three you know digital chains, and then you you do this you know modern scale modeling, 
or the system level modeling or the uh, interactions that you can call each other right? for the structure for the materials but it's not necessary to have all this is together right sometimes you need only one component of structure sometimes you need the system Excellent. okay very good thank you thank you so much okay let's thank dr wong again